uh, second part of November, and maybe it is a good time to talk about infrastructure as code security. All right. So let's start then. A few words about myself. Uh, my name is Alexander Kanaikin. I'm working as a DevOps engineer uh, for SoftSurf, and uh, I have an experience uh, about 20 years in IT. Uh, also, among my hobbies, I can mention trail running to overcome uh, work from home calls, right? And uh, aquarium fish keeping is also my hobby. So uh, during today uh, uh, meeting, we will discuss what is uh, IAC security, why uh, IAC security is important. We will discuss challenges and benefits, uh, uh, develop distribute best practices, deploy and resource management, runtime feedback, shift security left approach, uh, IAC security takeaways. Uh, I will show a quick example of uh, code static analysis tool check off and we'll discuss uh, some questions. So, uh, so what is uh, IAC security? As uh, all maybe all of you already know, infrastructure is a code also known as IAC, is an IT strategy that manages and verifies IT infrastructure as software. IAC enables operation teams and developers to automatically provision, uh, monitor, and uh, manage resources instead of manually installing and uh, uh, configuring software each time. So uh, IAC security is the practice of securing infrastructure that is managed using infrastructure as code. This can include uh, measures to secure uh, uh, IAC code base itself, as well as infrastructure resources that are managed using IAC. Uh, IAC security uh, can prevent misconfigurations from uh, reaching uh, live cloud environments and reduce the risk of data breaches, downtime, and deployment failures. So uh, why IAC security is so important? Uh, a major benefit of IAC is that virtualized infrastructure is deployed and configured the same way each time. However, IAC also introduces new uh, security challenges and risks that need to be comprehensively addressed at every stage of DevOps software development lifecycle. Uh, IAC security is the answer to cloud security in IAC forward environments. Uh, it is the only way uh, to get consistent, scalable, and immutable security. When clouds are orchestrated by misconfigured code, they will continue to be uh, orchestrated and configured incorrectly in production each time. So uh, uh, this is why IAC security is uh, an important part of IAC and DevSecOps practices. IAC security enables an organization to shift its, its security from detection to, to prevention. So let's discuss uh, some challenges and benefits we have. Among challenges of infrastructure as code security, uh, we can mention uh, misconfigurations in, in AC templates, uh, configuration drift uh, we have, then we change some uh, configuration uh, outside of uh, the code. Uh, ghost uh, resources, we have some, uh, maybe most of you uh, have uh, a chance to deal with some don't delete me EC2 instance. And uh, we uh, also may uh, mention exposed secrets, uh, excessive privileges of our users uh, and uh, non-compliant to the policies and standards uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, this is uh, all the challenges of infrastructure as code security. Uh, among uh, benefits, we can mention clear and detailed inventory of all digital assets. Uh, we may have automated scans of uh, a repository to identify uh, any misconfigurations uh, quickly. Uh, systems uh, are properly set up and aligned with established security standards and policies. Advanced security tools applied to analyze uh, uh, vulnerabilities and uh, uh, resources allocated to effectively mitigate vulnerabilities with proper, proper priorities. Okay, so let's discuss uh, uh, some uh, best practices. 
we may use uh, uh, during develop and distribute stage. So uh, IDE pl plugins uh, uh, we use to catch bugs and security issues sooner rather, rather than later as um, and we may use uh, such tools as HSTF lint, checkoff, docker linter, etc. So as developer, you can get feedback uh, right in your ID uh, uh, soon. Uh, and uh, also uh, we can uh, mention treat modeling. So uh, it is about uh, identifying and prioritizing risk in infrastructure design. So we may consider use of encryption, hash, and key management uh, techniques to pro protect sensitive data and credentials both uh, in transit and uh, at rest from the very beginning. Uh, about managing secrets, uh, uh, it is uh, about uh, uh, security tokens, SSH keys, and how we store uh, them. Because uh, usually uh, the problem is, is not in uh, the secrets, but in uh, how we store in them. And here we can use some uh, tools uh, to uh, manage secrets. Uh, and to store our own admin secrets, we may use uh, Bitwarden or uh, like Passbolt to share uh, secrets between uh, teams securely. Also, uh, there is a principle of least privilege. Uh, it is about uh, some, you know, Terraform almighty user, which have all the rights and uh, uh, to avoid this, we uh, may want to define users to create uh, the scripts, uh, update, delete, and so on, and uh, limiting permissions of authorized AAC users uh, only for uh, necessary tasks. Uh, also, uh, there is static analysis uh, of IAC. So uh, uh, we may scan code during pipeline executions uh, with tools like Coverity, Chekhov, and CubeScan uh, to uh, mitigate uh, risks, uh, misconfigurations uh, at early stage. Uh, also, uh, open, so open source dependency check we may use to uh, check our dependencies uh, in our code and uh, identify potential risks and vulnerabilities we may have uh, with uh, uh, after the some time uh, uh, since the, this code will was uh, written uh, about container uh, image scan uh, we uh, may uh, like uh, use some open source tools to check our images and artifacts uh, uh, for vulnerabilities to easily define which uh, vulnerabilities we have uh, in some image and quickly mitigate. Uh, about artifact signing, uh, we uh, may use it to uh, uh, like uh, avoid uh, using com compromised images and uh, checking uh, sign uh, uh, be before deploying it to runtime and uh, it is protect us from tampering uh, and use uh, signed images. Uh, okay, uh, at the deploy uh, stage of our code, uh, we may mention immutability, uh, like it is about uh, not allowing uh, post deployment changes uh, to our resources, which deviates from uh, the code we have. Uh, so if possible, we may use some policies on, or controls uh, to prevent the modification of uh, resources after they uh, have been deployed. Okay, so uh, also uh, here we have inventory management. So when we create in our resources and decommission them, uh, we may use uh, tools to automatically update inventory or, uh, or tags also uh, and tags uh, allows us to sort out our resources and make sure we uh, have uh, only uh, actual ones. And if possible, uh, we may want to apply tagging policies among our cloud uh, accounts. 
to uh, have this tagging uh, automatically, uh, automatically applied. So, uh, during uh, runtime, uh, we may have a uh, login. It is about enabling security logs and audit logs. Uh, while while provision uh, provisioning infrastructure as they uh, may help us to uh, assess the security risks and will be helpful in analyzing the cause of our uh, incidents. Uh, we may have used uh, tools like Datadog, uh, Ilka stack here uh, to leverage. Uh, also, after uh, logging, these logs would be fit to some same system. Uh, to analyze uh, for monitoring uh, assist class uh, uh, in looking uh, for our uh, uh, compliance violations and helps us identify some risks. Uh, also, we may use monitoring to uh, get feedback uh, from our runtime resources to update our codes after some like post mortem so so on. We may use uh, uh, like tools about uh, tools like Prometheus and Grafana to uh, have uh, monitoring of our assets. Uh, uh, so uh, also uh, we may mention uh, runtime tree detection, uh, and we may use some solution uh, to check for unexpected behavior. Uh, there is some tools uh, like uh, Falco uh, or uh, also, we may use some uh, classic EDR solutions here. Uh, and uh, about uh, mitigating alert fatigue, uh, we uh, strive for the balance between making sure everything is captured and not overloading uh, those responding to these issues uh, is a challenge. Uh, it is about like we have uh, some uh, a lot of uh, alerts and uh, for visibility and we may drown in some chats and email threads with these alerts. We have a lot of visibility here, but we may skip some critical ones. So we may add like some uh, prioritization here to make sure we catch and react on uh, high priority alerts. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll use another flow for, for uh, not so priority uh, alerts. Uh, so uh, also let's le let's discuss a shift left security approach. It is about uh, adding uh, security checks and tests uh, early at uh, the uh, our pipelines and uh, software development lifecycle. So may, uh, we may want to uh, implement uh, security policies. Uh, uh, firstly, we may define the security policies we want to use and implement them, implement our testing tools early in uh, the software development lifecycle from the beginning, so it will uh, fail early uh, and will not get to production, and embrace uh, security automation, uh, so our checks uh, will be uh, iteratively applied to the pipelines and uh, we may benefit from it. So let's discuss the benefits of shift left testing. It is about faster delivery, improved security posture because we uh, applying it from the start. Uh, it is about reduced costs uh, because we uh, detecting uh, misconfigurations early uh, before they even uh, go to production and mitigate them, uh, improving security integration and pace, because if we have our uh, security implemented from the very beginning, uh, we uh, know that our product is uh, secured, but uh, from the start, we uh, not adding security at the very end. Uh, so our product is secure, and that's why uh, we have uh, greater business success because our application is trusted and we may say that we have secured application. Uh, so we may discuss also uh, K uh, EAC security takeaways. Uh, so 
for automation and work workflow, we may integrate our uh, IAC security we, via IDs, CLI, version control systems, and our CI CD based uh, on uh, CI CD tools we use and our team needs. For coverage and depth of policies, we may cover uh, all frameworks we use, uh, all uh, best practices we may want to apply, and uh, compliance benchmark benchmarks uh, uh, if we need to be compliant to some like PCI DSS, SOC2, or some uh, another uh, compliance benchmarks. For uh, prioritization and remediation, uh, so we may say that, as we discussed, visibility is only valuable if uh, we, uh, we can uh, take steps and uh, uh, get the feedback uh, immediately. Uh, so we uh, have correct prioritization here. And uh, uh, broader impact and context of IAC security, we may analyze how uh, our security uh, affects uh, our uh, cloud resources, and uh, we may add uh, more security tools uh, to uh, to like uh, make sure our IAC uh, is secure enough. Uh, so uh, today I want to show you some uh, tool example uh, check off. It is great to uh, tool uh, to start with. It's, it is pretty pretty simple, but uh, powerful. It allows us to uh, scan our infrastructure as code files for uh, different frameworks uh, and uh, expose compliance problems. Uh, like we have a lot of policies already include, uh, included and we may use uh, custom policies and policy sets uh, to use. Uh, uh, this tool supports uh, such frameworks as for, uh, Terraform for most cloud providers, cloud formation, uh, Azure Resource Manager, serverless, uh, Helm charts, uh, uh, Kubernetes, and Docker. So uh, let's maybe uh, start from some uh, demonstration. Uh, also, uh, it, this tool is uh, pretty well documented, so uh, I must, uh, I already pre-installed the tool to show you. Uh, so I have some cloned uh, repository, and I use this uh, tool as simple as that uh, to check. Um, do we have some? misconfiguration here. After uh, this tool, let's analyze uh, the output. After this tool worked, we uh, can see that we have uh, 11 checks passed and we have seven failed checks and we may want to analyze them. Uh, it is about like this example repository. Uh, we may want to add monitoring for EC2 instance ensure uh, this EBS is optimized. Uh, there is a lot of policies here. Uh, security groups rule has a description uh, and so on. So uh, also we may uh, use that check of tool on uh, separate fi files uh, among our repository and we may mangle output in different formats like JSON, CSV, uh, uh, JUnit, and we may fit this tool uh, is uh, by Prisma Cloud Palo Alto Networks, and we may also export output of this tool to uh, visualize it graphically, but uh, also we uh, may have output is in JSON format uh, to use on, or CSV. Uh, also, uh, let's say uh, we have already provisioned infrastructure and we may want to add some security here but uh, we don't want to block our processes and we uh, may want to uh, add the security uh, iteratively in few sprints so we may use flags like 
soft file uh, and uh, if I uh, use that soft file, soft file with compact uh, even if we uh, use um, uh, even we, if we have some issues here uh, these checks only generate reports and uh, not fail our pipeline so uh, we may check it with uh, exit code is uh, zero if you can see uh, without this soft fail flag uh, we may have uh, we will have uh, exit code one and it will fail our Jenkins pipeline uh, GitHub actions pipeline uh, and so on uh, also there is uh, a hard file flag uh, so uh, we may uh, want to fail uh, these checks only if uh, we have some critical errors uh, and if we run we will see that uh, it will also pass uh, because we don't have critical errors uh, here. Uh, what else? If uh, if we want to, uh, okay. Uh, we may want to uh, use some specific checks. So we only uh, check this CKV AWS uh, twenty three. Uh, check uh, ignoring all other checks in most cases uh, also we uh, want to use uh, when we have docker we may want to use dockerized uh, application because uh, it we, we will have uh, in such way we will have uh, current latest version for the application and we uh, may use it like this so we simply uh, mounting that folder to uh, container and uh, run run it. Let's try. Uh, so in that way we can uh, use that tool in uh, our Jenkins pipelines, uh, GitLab CI pipelines. Also, these tools have a lot of integrations with. Uh, GitHub actions, we may use it with uh, our pre-commit checks, uh, only check uh, uh, files where we have some differences. Also, it can uh, check uh, Helm charts and uh, it uh, may be run on Kubernetes cluster, uh, already deployed cluster. And uh, we may analyze infrastructure, not only the code, but we may run it uh, on Kubernetes cluster and we'll see outcomes uh, we get uh, with uh, this tool. Uh, we allowed to use our own policies. We may contribute or we may have private policies for this tool. Uh, so uh, we may add uh, our own like compliance. Uh, also, there is uh, a lot. Uh, this product is pretty well documented uh, and we may analyze this website to uh, check, uh, like, to check uh, list of the policies we have here uh, and analyze them. Okay, so uh, let's get back to our presentation. Uh, uh, maybe it is all information I want to share with you, and maybe to inspire you to use some. Uh, tools and approaches, so maybe you have some questions.